Hello, welcome to another edition of the Master Series. I'm Deborah Louise, and I'm here today with Khaled Alawa. He is owner of the beautiful uh, Primavera Art Gallery in Ojai, California. So, welcome, Khaled. Thank you. The conversation about mastery, and I know that it seems to be daunting to a lot of people what mastery is, but um, we're all masters in our own right uh, of our world and how we operate it. So I know you are a master, a master businessman. You have uh, many different projects that you've done. You've been in the gallery for 30 years here. So I'd like to just talk about your experience of mastery and um, some of the uh, some of the people that you deal with and, and working with artists and their mastery as well, what you've learned over the years. Well, I can never think of myself as a master. I can think of myself as ever evolving. There is not a day that passes that I don't add to my experience, to my knowledge, to my information, to all of that. So it's an ever evolving process. And I, at the same time, you're saying about artists and people who come into the gallery and what have you, again, I feel like when the artist says, okay, I am a master, that means they're done, it's over. So I hope that all of us, we are ever evolving. And, uh, and yes, we start to master gently certain things, but there's always something else to master. So it's, a, it's an evolving process. That's the way I would like to put it. That's beautifully put. So it's really about um, the qualities that a person has to develop rather than just getting um, stagnant? Well, you know, the qualities, you know, that we do develop for whatever it is that we are doing, mm -hmm. the number one for me, uh, the most important thing actually, is to love what you do mm -hmm. uh, and to care for what you do. And uh, once you do that, then, then you can do something from all your heart, and you really, it becomes a little bit effortless because when you are involved in something that you love and admire, uh, and uh, then it's much easier, you know, much easier. And yes, I am associated with the arts and that comes from a very uh, young age. You know, like I remember whatever I was in any different culture or different environment and what have you. Uh, what I looked at to really take as a souvenir is some piece of art. Um, and I've always been fascinated with the arts because it comes because from an, uh, I can never do anything with my hands, really. I mean, talk about mastery, that's something, I, not even a, a novice. I can't do anything with my hands. So my art appreciation is 10 times stronger than anybody else because for me, what, what I, when I look at what people create, it sounds like a miracle to me that they do. You know, it's, and I'm not in a position to even take away or add or do anything in that. Um, but you do choose artists. And I was wondering if we could talk about some of the process of choosing who to have in your gallery and what you've learned. Well, First of all, I never deny any artist to bring in their work and show me their work. And, uh, and I'm like anybody else, you know, even the customer that comes in here, the person with potential, you know, there will be 20, 30, 50, we have over 60 artists, but then they zone in on one artist or two artists. And the same criteria I utilize for myself when I'm choosing artists, I have to love the work. I, because if you really truly do not love what you're about to carry in your gallery, it would be a very difficult sell mm -hmm. because then you're a salesperson. But when I choose something that I really admire, the work of a particular artist, and a customer comes in, I'm no longer selling. I'm just singing the praises of the art that I am carrying in the gallery. And that is my main criteria. And, and don't get me wrong, sometimes I love to support rising artists, even though their work is not there yet. 
but, but everybody has to start somewhere. And for a lot of artists, if they are in a gallery, it's a very big deal. It's a very big deal. So, so sometimes, yes, I try to feature. I've tried actually, I did several years ago a show in Ohio for parents and their children who are artists at the same time. And that was a very nice and successful show. You know, because a lot of the parents there already, if I want to call that word master again, were really mastered their craft and their art. And then the children too, I feel like uh, the influence of the parents on them, they're on their way. But it was a very successful thing because all of a sudden they have a gallery show right. when they were still very young. Yeah. So, That's yeah. Yeah, it added to the teaching quality too for the parents yes. as well. Yes. So maybe you could talk about building relationships. We talked about when you choose, you're connected to the piece in a certain way. So there's two avenues I like to talk about is the, that connection. What draws, what, what are the essence that draw you in and make you want to me In regard to the artist, right. uh, first of all is the artwork. Mm -hmm. Second of all, um, in order for a gallery to get, you know, uh, to commit an artist, you know, into a gallery, uh, you would hope they have more than one or two or ten or fifty paintings in them. <laughs> you know, so it's a very important thing to see a body of work, you know, from the artist's, you know, point of view, because it's a it's a great commitment to the gallery when you dedicate, you know, your walls to represent uh, an artist. So, um, and for me, like the connection, it is very important for me to have a very good relationship with the artist because I feel like if you don't have that, it will reflect on you when you actually are uh, describing the work of an artist or talking about the artist uh, to, to a potential client and what have you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I, reason I'd love to have that very strong relationship with the artist because and I can very freely talk and I'm speaking you know honestly on their behalf and on my own behalf. As you spoke about it you, there's been a nice relationship because you show the artist's work. Where do you think in our digital age now that that galleries are going? Are they going to are you going to go virtual online? Well it's a very fast changing world and it's taking a lot of adjustment for me to make and I, when I speak to other gallery owners too, it's a lot of adjustment. You know, uh, I have no problem in uh, exposing a lot of the work to the digital world, through the digital world, you know, that is available and what have you. But uh, I use myself as the measuring stick. I would never ever buy an art piece because I happen to see it on a computer. I would really want, because the, what, what the digital uh, instruments do, it's either they, they enhance it so well or they make it look worse. So, and when you are actually buying, you really would like to see the art piece in person. And especially with the art that we are selling, it is not like, I mean, yes, if it, the art piece is under four or five hundred dollars, okay, you will take a risk and you'll do that. But if an art piece is at a high price, you're not going to just buy it because you just happen to see it on the computer. And don't get me wrong, if you are familiar with a particular artist and their body of work and you have seen it many times in person, then you can give yourself the permission to buy something like that over the computer. But I try, yes, we do have a website and people navigate and do all of those things. But you know what? I've had a website for the last 16 years. I don't think I've sold more than two pieces over the website, right. you know. And I like people to see the work in person, right. you know, because it makes a big difference. What about your artists? Are they online too? Yes. Today, everybody is online. The artists are online, the galleries are online and all of those things. I, I, you know, this being online, don't get me wrong, it gives an incredible exposure that was not available before. And uh, the only issue I have with this whole idea of online 
is uh, it has shifted from the emphasis from the galley trying to promote and things like that. It's the majority of people really try to pin galleries against each other <laughs> to say, okay, I can get this piece for this much and I can go to the other gallery, it's much less than what you're selling it for. I really think if this is the way it is going to go, it actually end up diminishing the, the artwork, in my opinion. And, and to be frank with you, uh, it, it is so rare that outside of galleries, anybody will go and try to negotiate, well, car dealerships, you go and negotiate about a car. But almost every other business on this planet, you walk in, and that's it. The price that they're asking, you can walk into Kmart, to Neiman Marcus, you can walk in to any almost store, to Walmart. The price is the price. There is no one to negotiate with. But it's the biggest mystery for me when people walk into the gallery and, and supposedly they're there to honor the art and the artists. They negotiate quite a bit. It's a very big mystery to me uh, uh, because I think you know, the artists deserve, I mean, they, if, if anybody knows what an artist goes through to create an art piece, it, it's really they put their whole being, their soul, their spirit, their everything, their creative energy, you know, to, to create an art piece. And, and, and uh, I hope, and I love artists to be appreciated when they're alive, right. not after they die. That I said to some one client one time, of course I would never mention names, I said, you know, when an artist is alive, we always try to almost, if we can get the painting for free, then that's fine. But once they're done, we pay millions of dollars to get their painting. So I said, let's honor the artists when they're alive. Because they're deserving, they bring so much beauty. You know, the way they interpret. Like, for me, an artist on canvas is like poetry, you know? I mean, it really, they, they just like, what they go through to just create that moment in time and capture it and make a lot of us come in and be captivated by it and we feel like, oh, a sense of wonderment and almost like it's so exciting. Oh, look what this artist has done. God, look how they captured that sunset or that wave or whatever it is. And that's the beauty of it. You know, so let us honor these people. I always, I am a very advocate of honoring the artists and allow them to really thrive. Very few artists make a living from their art. The majority, the majority of artists have to have another job to support themselves, you know. So uh, let's honor them. That's how I feel about it. If you're buying a well-known artist who, who's uh, a fine art artist yes. and has a reputation. Um, it doesn't matter what piece, and, and they have their value piece as kind of an investment. They love the piece. Is it an investment? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. I, this is, I hope it's not going to offend anybody, but almost everybody that comes in to buy a work of art is a closet investor. And, and the two most asked questions that we get asked in the gallery is how old is the artist? And the other one, how long did it take the artist to do that piece? And for like a couple of years, I see you're wondering, and I wondered for a couple of years, why are these questions are asked? Well, that, if it takes too long, that means the art took a lot of time and a lot of energy and it is worthy of the price. And, uh, and, uh, and how old is the artist? Why would you ask how old is the artist? My answer to that, I never ask an artist how old they are, is to see, well, if they are in their 80s, maybe this is the time for me to, 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 to buy them. But when somebody says to me, if this piece is a good, I get asked that question, is this piece a good investment? You know, is it gonna go? I said, if you want to invest, go to the stock market. <laughs> I say it. I mean, I say it very clearly. What you buy is an investment for your soul and your spirit. 
you're not, if you're buying something to invest, I hope one day it will become millions of dollars, that's fine. And if it does not go up in price, I hope you like it enough. And every day you look at it, you appreciate what you bought. It brings you, why do you buy art? Because it brings you some, it brings nature to your home, you know. Not all of us have the ability just to go every day and walk and do all of those things. And the artist really captured that moment in time, you know, uh, because every moment in nature is ever changing. And they are able to always capture that moment in time and put it on canvas. And somebody comes in and says, oh my God, how did they do this? This is awesome. It's a masterpiece. So, you know, don't get me wrong. I, you know, people can do whatever they want to do, but I never ever promote anything that as an investment. Right. I don't. I don't believe in that personally. But it should add value to your life. When I know when I get uh, a painting on the wall that's a, that's of a high quality um, abstraction, every time I pass it, I see something new in it. Mm -hmm. It's it it it, it brings a more value to my life that I didn't see yesterday. I think art does that. And that's the best investment you made. Exactly. You know? That's <laughs> exactly. what it is. Exactly. I mean, could you imagine if you, you know, like if something gives you joy by looking at it, mm -hmm. and okay, I'm going to sound a little corny, but honestly, I many times, almost like almost on a daily basis, before I, I, I am a very major collector of art. I really literally sit down and just observe the art mm -hmm. and allow it to just come in and create whatever it is going to create into my soul and to my spirit. I do that quite a bit. And that's the whole idea of art. I mean, that's the whole idea. I say, look, when you buy a piece of art, is not going to feed the children? Is not going to send them to school and pay their tuition? It's not going to do anything like that. You know, what it's going to do is hopefully brings joy to your life when you look at that piece of art. You know, and that's well, now we're talking about paintings. What about sculpture? What about movies? What about uh, uh, concerts, music? I mean, is there anything on this planet that is not an expression of art? There is nothing. Even the museums that house the art are an expression of art. You know, I mean, everything is art. You know, our streets are an art form. You know, our buildings, everything is a form of art. I don't see of anything that is not some kind of an artistic expression, mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes we call it craft, we call it something else, but it, in reality it is an artistic expression, right. you know. And, and, and fine art, whether it's in music, sculpture, paintings or what have you, remains throughout the ages, you know. We still listen to classical music that was composed 300 years ago, 400 years ago. It is immortal. It will never die. Right. It will never wear you out. I mean, you just like, and that's the beauty of art. You know, that's really the whole beauty of art. And how did we ever discover people way thousands of years? How did we know about how they lived their life, how they behaved, how they conducted their daily business, and what have you? It is through the arts that we see on some of the caves, on the walls, and what have you. So art has been with us from the very, very, very beginning, you know, and it really has opened a major window for us when we look at the ancient, the thousands of years old, you know, like uh, what they have done in those years. And we learn a lot about those cultures through the art. So art is an incredible record of history for us to know about what's going on, you know, and what has gone on before us. And hopefully, who are living in this day, one day we would leave our mark too, you know. And hopefully somebody would appreciate it or learn something for it or say it's no good. But I don't know what would be the judge. But there does seem to be a judge because some, like those great works of music or literature or, or that stand the test of time, just like art, art stands the test of time. And I think that it has to do with quality of mastery that one has in his expression and being a daily purpose for doing what they're doing.
That's why I feel like artists are ahead of their time. Sometimes. <laughs> They're way ahead of their time. And it takes us a lot of what you call time to pass in order for them to be appreciated in almost every form. You know, they, they challenge the status quo, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, so. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much. My pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure. It's been delightful. Yeah, thank so, you. Thank you for joining us.